One of the most popular questions that I get from virtual assistants is, where should I look for clients? And duh, that's a really good question. But a couple of weeks ago, I decided that it might be a good idea to flip that question upside down and ask, where do clients look for virtual assistants? So I went right to the source and I pulled 50 women business owners about where they prefer to find virtual assistants for their businesses. And the answers were very interesting. I'll let you in on all the secrets in today's episode. You're listening to the Support Squad Podcast, where virtual assistants come together to share their best business tools and tips. Virtual assistant for life coaches, Sharon Nissen, created the Support Squad with a firm belief in community over competition. Whether you're a new virtual assistant looking for advice on how to get started, or an established virtual assistant looking to expand your skills and invite even more abundance into your career, you're in the right place. Working from home doesn't have to be lonely. We're in this together. Now, here she is, the host of the Support Squad podcast, Sharon Nissen. Hey, it's me, Sharon. I'm so happy that you are here with me today. Creating this little podcast has brought me so much joy, and it's all thanks to you guys. I know that we are just starting our journey together, and I am so grateful for the community that we're already building. Before we dive into today's super juicy episode, I want to share the sweet review that meant more to me than you can know. It's from Lucy Peeps and it's titled Loving It. She says, let's just start with how soothing her voice is. She could be talking about anything and I would listen because it's so calm and clear. The content though is great. I love how each podcast is brief and straight to the point. It's power packed with exactly what I need and want to know. I've been binge listening since I stumbled upon this and I'm glad for it. Keep up the great work. Lucy, thank you so much. I want to share why this review meant so much to me, and it might not be why you think. See, my whole life, I have been incredibly self-conscious about my voice. I've been told many times that I'm too loud or that I talk like a little girl, and I'll be honest, I was terrified to start this podcast because I imagined getting tons of comments about how annoying my voice is. And let's face it, women get criticized for their voices all of the time. How many times do we hear female politicians and radio hosts and actresses get called shrill or abrasive or nasally? I believe that this is a not so subtle way of silencing strong women by making them self-critical of even the way that they speak. So Lucy, your review was a beautiful reminder to me to shut down that self-critical voice in my head and to never be afraid to speak out. Thank you so much. And cheers to all of us strong women. Just had to throw in that little tidbit of empowerment today, and it doesn't hurt that I'm recording this on International Women's Day, the best day ever. Okay, so into today's episode. A lot of virtual assistants have their go-to places to find new clients. I know VAs that swear by Instagram. I know VAs that love to attend local chamber of commerce meetings or VAs that have found great clients on LinkedIn. But I've rarely seen the other side of this. Where do business owners turn first when they need to find a virtual assistant? I decided to pull a group of women business owners and ask them directly. And honestly, I was really surprised by some of the answers. It all seemed way too juicy not to share, so I wanted to let you guys in on some of the trends that came up. So the most common trend that I saw was business owners that found their virtual assistants through personal referrals. And this one actually wasn't surprising to me at all. After I started working as a virtual assistant for life coaches, all of my clients knew other life coaches that needed a VA. And it totally makes sense that a person in one industry would ask for advice and referrals from another person in that same industry. There are a couple things we can take away from this information. One, it's vitally important that you do your very best work for every single client, 
especially that first client. You want to be that person that they are dying to tell all of their friends about. You want them to be thinking, oh my gosh, what did I ever do without you? Always make sure to pay attention to detail and go above and beyond whenever possible. Happy clients will write you powerful testimonials and they'll refer you to their friends. And the second thing we can take away from this is that it can be incredibly beneficial to work in a specific industry. Business owners are much more likely to ask for referrals from people that are also in their industry. Knowing that you can do great work for a friend that is in the same space as they are will make them feel confident about hiring you. Another trend that I saw come up a lot was Facebook groups. And the other side of that trend was frustration with Facebook groups. Y'all, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and I see this one thing all of the time. And based on my conversations with other entrepreneurs, it is not something you should be doing. Here's what it looks like. A business owner will post in a Facebook group looking for some simple advice or feedback and will immediately get inundated with VAs asking if they can send a DM or saying, email me or saying, I'd love to be your virtual assistant. And here's the problem with that. VAs that do this are already showing potential clients that they don't listen and respond to simple directions or questions. Facebook groups are social supportive places. They are a great place to find out what your ideal client needs support with or to make connections with potential clients, but there is a right and a wrong way to go about it. So if a potential client posts an actual job opportunity, meaning they actually say, I'm looking for a virtual assistant, I'm accepting application, send them to this email. That's a totally appropriate Um, time to read through their post, see if you're a good fit, and then let them know exactly how you can help. Make sure you pay very close attention to how they would like to be contacted. This is your first opportunity to show that you pay close attention to detail. Now, if a potential client posts a question like, how do I create a MailChimp campaign? This is not a good place to start pitching your services. This is a great place to start relationship building. I know from experience how frustrating it is to ask a simple question in a Facebook group and get a bunch of pitches instead of actual advice. What would stand out to me as a business owner, and this is also based off my conversations with other business owners, is if a VA actually answered my question in a helpful way. Like what if you saw that question? How do I create a MailChimp campaign? And you did a quick screen share to show the beginning steps. This would show your potential client that you know your stuff, and it will probably show them that it would be beneficial to outsource this particular task instead of learning it themselves. And maybe you won't get hired on the spot, but that potential client will definitely remember you. This is where it's important to mention that you should have your Facebook profile totally filled out. If someone sees your comment in a Facebook group, they should easily be able to click over to your profile and see your website, your email, your Instagram page, and any other information that could be relevant about your business. Make sure that they can find you again. If you're looking for more info on how to find clients in Facebook groups, make sure to listen to episode five of the podcast. I cover a ton of information there. I also have a downloadable guide about finding clients in Facebook groups and the freebie shop on the support squad.com. Make sure to check it out. Another interesting trend that I saw from business owners is that they like to use directories to find virtual assistants. Usually these directories are associated with a brand or person that they already know and trust. Motivatedmompreneurs.com was one that I saw come up a few times and huntwisely.com was another. I got the sense that business owners like to hire VAs from a curated group instead of a large pool. 
I'll add links to some directories in the show notes and also take this opportunity to let you know that the Support Squad membership site, which I'm launching in May, (laughs) will also include a directory. I'm asked every day if I know a good virtual assistant. So I'm excited to be able to feature my members in a directory so that I can send referrals their way. And the main takeaway that I got from polling business owners about where they prefer to find virtual assistants, relationships are everything. People want to work with virtual assistants that they feel some kind of connection to. Whether it's from a personal referral from a friend or a friendly relationship from a Facebook group. And my advice to you is to spend dedicated time every day building connections with people online. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time and effort to build those relationships, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. Want to chat more about this week's episode? Make sure to join us in the Support Squad Hangout on Facebook. I am always happy to answer your questions, and there are a ton of brilliant women in there who can also support you. I'll see you in there. Until next time, boss babes.